Hey, so welcome back and this is another Leco problem. So today what we're gonna do is minimum adjacent swaps to make a valid array. And this is actually like my first Leco problem since like like a week or two and a half weeks ago or something because I've been on vacation. But um, yeah, so let's uh, do the first question back. So I did this just a few minutes ago and I'll run through um, what my thinking process was. So essentially what we're given here is an array called nums, and we want to perform uh, some minimum swaps to satisfy some condition that makes it a valid array. So we're given something here that could be an invalid array. Uh, this example here actually already is a valid array, and so you have to make zero swaps to it because you only want to make swaps in order to make it a valid array. So because this is already valid, you need zero swaps but this one was originally invalid, so you have to make some swaps to make it valid. Okay, and so essentially, the validity of the array um, is dependent on these two conditions. Essentially, all that it is, is that you wanna place the largest element in the rightmost position, and you wanna place the smallest element in the leftmost position. And so the only other catch here is that there could be like multiple instances of this smallest element and multiple instances of this largest element. And so what that looks like here is you can see in this case, five is the largest element, but there's two of them. And then one in this case is the smallest element, but then there's only one instance of that. And so because we want to perform the minimum swaps to make it a valid array, uh, all that you wanna do here really is that, okay, say if we're looking at the largest element, the one that we're gonna to want to grab is the one on the rightmost position. And that's just because, well, because we have to move it to the rightmost position in the array, let's just grab the closest one uh, furthest to the right. So you have to make less swaps. And that's really the only kind of minimization technique that you have to make. And so say if there's two ones, there's a one here, and say this was a one, well, we wouldn't use this one, we would use this one because it only takes like one move or one swap to bring it to the leftmost position. Okay, and so to do this, um, the first thing that I thought of was, okay, uh, you really want to first know, okay, what is the smallest and the largest element, as well as what are their kind of rightmost um, index and leftmost index for the corresponding kind of largest and smallest element. And once you kind of have that information, um, you can really just go ahead and solve the problem. Uh, the only thing that I kind of thought of is, okay, like how do I kind of determine how many swaps are you gonna to have to do? And I knew quickly on that that would probably be like a, like a math function just because, well, once you have those uh, points, it's really just, okay, what's the distance um, from those edges depending on that index? But I knew that there was a, kind of off the top of my head that there would be an edge case, and there was, and I'll explain that uh, once we write the code out. So let's go ahead and figure out, okay, what is the um, minimum and maximum elements as well as their corresponding kind of rightmost and leftmost positions. And so let's go ahead and we'll just call this like largest element and smallest element, as well as like the largest uh, index, as well as the smallest index. And so what this will be is, well, Initially, the largest element, well, let's just set that as negative infinity, just to force that we set this variable. The smallest element will initially be set as infinity. The largest index will be zero, and then the smallest index will be zero. And so once again, we're gonna want the largest index to be kind of the rightmost instance of it, so this five, not this one. And then the leftmost index, well, that'll be this one because there's only one, but say if there was a one here, you'd use that one. All right, and so to figure that out, let's go ahead and find out. So all that you have to do is, we're just gonna wanna iterate from the array from left to right, and just keep actively updating the minimum and the maximum uh, index and values. And so what that looks like in Python, it was we just use the enumerate, so we can grab the corresponding index and value uh, in this particular array. And so we're gonna kinda repeat this logic twice, so we'll just copy paste the code, but Essentially, we just wanna say, okay, is the current number 
um, smaller than the current running smallest and is it larger than the current running largest? So if the current number is less than the smallest, let's go ahead and kind of set that as the smallest here. And then we're also gonna to want to update the index. So the smallest index will be, then be equal to um, the current index. Okay, and so we're gonna to want to duplicate this logic then. Uh, same way, but kind of inverted for the largest. So let's check for the largest. We'll update the largest. And then also we wanna update this largest index. Now the only catch here is that, okay, um, what you want to be doing is that you wanna grab the leftmost um, smallest element and then the rightmost largest element. And so this logic is already correct because, well, even if you stumble upon a number that is equal to the current smallest, we're not gonna update it. And so that already gives us the leftmost index, but then we want the rightmost index for the largest and so all they have to do here is just add an equals to. And so that just says, okay, if we found a number that's equal to the largest index that we already have, let's update it anyway so that we get the index furthest to the right since this is going left to right. Okay, and so from here, we're simply going to want to return the minimum swaps. And this is kind of a math function here. The first thing that you have to understand is that, okay, if we just look at the smallest element, which is one, the number of swaps that's going to have to make is basically um, the smallest index. And so because the smallest index in this point is pretty much the length of the array and there's six elements, it would take like six swaps from this point on to get it to the last position, if that makes sense. Or really it's the length minus one. All right, and so, but we also want to include the largest element. And so if you look at the largest element, the number of the swaps it's going to have to make isn't the distance from the beginning. It's really the distance from the current index up to kind of the end length of this array. And so you don't want this uh, portion, you want this side, while the smallest index, you kind of want the left side, if that makes sense. And so we're just going to kind of subtract the overall length of the array, which is n minus by like this largest index variable, largest index, okay? But while the uh, smallest or the distance from the uh, smallest element would just be simply uh, that smallest index. All right, and so to do that, all that we have to do is okay, we wanna say our response is n equal to the smallest index plus that kind of mathematical function, which is just, and we'll set it up here first. So n is equal to uh, the length of the array nums uh, minus one because it's non-inclusive. So then we do n minus the largest index. But once again, um, I just want to repeat that there is an edge case here and we're going to want uh, to handle that. Oh, edge case, there we go. And so what this is, is that if the um, smallest index or smallest number is on the right hand side, which it is, and then the largest number is kind of on the left side, then these are going to overlap as you're swapping them over. So you can see here, if we swap these, uh, first swap one with three, then one would be here, and then three would be here. But then when we swap five and one, this actually is an advantage because five and one will swap. So one goes here, and then five is moved onto this side. And the advantage of this is then that five, instead of having to do one, like two hops, it only has to actually do one hop since it's kind of using the swap that you need to do with this number uh, one here. Okay, and so to handle that edge case, what we do is kind of just check that condition. So we just say, okay, um, let's return the response minus one because you're gonna to have to do one less swap if we meet that special case, which is, okay, our 
smallest index is greater than our largest index. Otherwise, we just return the response as it is. Oh, we got something wrong here. Uh, maybe I just have this inverted. No, what are we missing here? Um, smallest index. Not sure what I'm missing. Oh, let's just go ahead. Maybe I'm just being rusty because it's the first day back. I did this just an hour ago, so let's go ahead and just quickly compare this to what I have, just so that there's no confusion. Sorry about this. So um, they're both set to zero initially, negative and positive infinity. Uh, we set n as the smallest. Oh, <laughs> we're actually just setting n here, but not we're we're not updating uh, that. So we got to update the largest as n. We're not updating n. There we go. So we want to update the smallest as n. This is definitely bad here. Looks good, let's try submitting. And success, so sorry about that, that's just a dumb mistake. So naturally, we don't wanna be updating the value of n because that's what we're iterating through and it's the current number. We wanna update the smallest and largest variables. Uh, but yeah, hope that helped a little bit. It's O of n time complexity because well, we're going to be iterating through the array from left to right um, at most once. And then also uh, it's O of one or constant time or constant space complexity, sorry. And that's because we're just using variables here and not using any extra data structure. So yeah, I hope that helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.